it's really one of my favorite stories. The ICW and um, back in those days, I think we were called the CWA, my family's yeah. promotion, my father's promotion. Uh, but man, uh, Savage. Rick Rogers, man, the man who was in the parking lot with me and realizes the truth. He's gonna put up his hair against Rip Tyler, the bear man. Combs, Combs, Kentucky, get it? Combs, Combs, Kentucky! And Randy Savage and Randy Poffo, his brother, and Angelo, the father. Uh, they really gave it a good go, and and, and uh, you they, know, they they ran their area, and they you know we were right next door to it, and it got really heated. Uh, guns involved, arrest involved, and that's that's a shoot. I Park, mean that parking lot brawls involved. Bam! I said, "What the hell, Randy? Run, boy, and sucker punch me, hit me now!" So we get rolling around like two old women on the ground. So I thought, if I get to the back of my car, I will restore order. Thirty-eight cocked the gun and put it to his head, and I said. Your son, tell him to leave or I will shoot you right where you stand. A pretty good knockdown drag out in the Waffle House. They went down to the Waffle House. I think they'd done a joint or two or something. And this guy busted through the door. I and mean, he said, hey, everybody, I'm going to get married. Savage says, who gives a shit? And they just started fighting. The guy stands up and pulls a knife. And Savage sees that. Well, he don't have a knife. So he jumped over the counter and grabbed a knife. And Sabbath said he looked down and he had a butter knife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Savage uh, was hungry, uh, you know, literally kind of fighting for his promotional life uh, or his uh, work life. Peter Springfield, Illinois, on April the 10th, Saturday. Yeah. We're to Peter, Illinois, Saturday, April the 24th. Man. And I tell George Weingroff, I say, me! Obviously, a different era, a different time. Uh, and uh, my dad always respected Randy's talent. Randy, to this day, is the most honorable wrestler I ever knew. And when they uh, basically uh, kind of said, uh, you know, no more uh, as far as running, it had nothing to do with my dad's promotion. Uh, they were promoting and successful and Randy and Angelo and Lanny. You know, Puffo looks almost exactly like he looked when he came into the business. Uh, kind of closed up shop, uh, but uh, when one door closes, the other door opened. And when my dad and Savage got on the phone, I don't think Randy, I think it was the last thing he expected when my dad said, hey, oh yeah, let's do a deal. Uh, let's kind of figure out how to work together. And he called Randy off guard, but uh, just uh, really a legendary story. And that kind of birthed the uh, Lawler, Randy, Jerry Lawler, Randy Savage feud. Jerry Lawler, who wants you to understand one thing right now? Stay away from me right now. You're talking forever young, baby. You're talking forever young. Monday night in the Miss South Coliseum. You come on down, and you bring your forever young, and I'll promise you one thing. I'll promise you that you will walk out of there alive. You understand that? You understand that, Jerry Jack? Get away from me too, baby. It did a huge box office, uh, Rupp Arena. Uh, it was one of the biggest crowds in Lexington, but it was all over Nashville, uh, Memphis, Louisville, Evansville, Indiana, all over the seven state area, and did mega, mega business. And this is only the beginning of the mayhem, which though it was acted out by Savage, and he was loving every minute of it, the wild son of a gun was just eating it up as he was tearing people apart in there. You see Newman directing him, throwing back in the ring, Tux Newman, in my opinion, orchestrated the whole dad blame thing, Eddie. And of course, Randy uh, left our territory and went on to become a, a legend at uh, WWF. You got lust in your eyes and in your black heart for Elizabeth. It's amazing that they were able to do business after how personal it got. You talk about the guns being pulled. It had to, was it personal for you? I mean, obviously it's the business, but it's your dad who is there. And you know, he, at the time, it's, it's one of those things. I had no idea it was going on. He didn't bring that stuff up. It certainly wasn't. He true. had to know, though, right? I mean, oh, people, no, no, oh, no, he's he just threatening to come me. kill you. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I was, uh, at the time when all that was going on, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, a young guy. So he yeah. didn't share that kind of family business with us. Uh, 
but it was well known. And uh, not long after uh, I became right in my early teen years, I kind of got the understanding. And, but, but by that time, I'm watching Savage and Lawler all work together. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a super super intense time uh, when you hear. My uh, grandfather Eddie Marlin and tell his accounts and his stories. Yeah, he carried a briefcase, and back in those days, it was a very much a cash business. So you know, uh, again, uh, a lot of threats going on. But it was, uh, you know, Randy and Bob Roop, and uh, gosh, I could go down a list. You know, they would wait outside our shows, and make challenges, and promote, uh, you know, promote their shows and our shows. But. You should do that to promote this one coming up. <laughs> Go well, to, you got to find me another promotion. Well, go to anyone for just yeah, a second. Yeah, absolutely. Could I just get a big smile? I want to get that that in the background there. Hey, this is Double J Jeff Jarrett, two-time Hall of Famer, the last outlaw. 217 Problems? Click, like, subscribe. Do all you got to do for social media, but join us right here for all the breaking news, all the gossip, anything you want in the 217. Problems they are? Yeah. We'll solve them for you. That's so cool. If you stand, stand with